Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us at um, Spotlight on Bicycling. I'm Connie Zabel Schmucker. I'm Advocacy Director for Bicycle Garage Indy. And tonight's topic is um, how to find great bike rides using RideSpot. And I wanted to give um, a little bit of background about RideSpot um, as well as I'm going to take a poll. Let me get my polls up um, so that I have a better idea about the audience and your experience with different ride programs. So if you can click on all that apply, these are all multiple choice questions. So what type of bicycling do you currently do? What ride programs have you used or are familiar with? And how do you currently find out about places to ride? So there's three questions. So I'm gonna go ahead and launch the poll and go ahead while we're waiting for people to um, log in, we'll go ahead and do the poll. So I'll give you about, uh, 30 seconds or 40 seconds to fill that out. And while you're doing that, I'll tell you a little bit about RideSpot. So um, probably in 2015, 2016, uh, Bicycle Garage Indy hosted uh, dealers from Shimano dealers. And there were 20 of them and they were talking about how can we get more people bicycling. And so they called themselves the 20 Collective and they came up with this idea of having some kind of brand neutral website that people could find out all sorts of stuff about bicycling and find out routes. Because one of the number one questions that we as bicycle retailers get is, okay, I've got this bike, but where do I ride it? And so wanted to have an easy way for people um, to find that out. So um, Scott Helvey, Bicycle Garage Indies um, COO, was part of this collective and this group went out to the bicycle industry and raised funds to get this idea from an idea to an actual product. And, you know, there's our go RVing sites, there's go fishing sites, and they use those kind of as a basis for a go biking site. And I'm gonna end the polling right now and share the results. And let's see. Okay, I'm gonna stop my screen sharing for right now. Um, so we, we were involved from the beginning in, in helping raise funds for, for what is now Ride Spot. It was actually called Black River. And in 2017, I think, or sometime around there, uh, People for Bikes had a conference in Indianapolis called Places for Bikes. And the program was called Black River. It was a, a working prototype and I created some rides on that platform for the conference. Um, fast forward a year or two and um, there was enough funding for People for Bikes, the national organization, uh, took over the program of, uh, of RideSpot and they launched it in 2019 as RideSpot. So it is a national program and we're very happy to have been involved from the ground floor and I'm still a beta tester. And we have, um, so in 2019 when they officially launched it, I went and made all sorts of different bike rides and have a hashtag 30 bike rides in Indy um, on, they're actually Indianapolis and surrounding 
uh, surrounding counties. There's about 25 to 30 of them. Um, we've highlighted 12 of them in a map in our stores. And Zoe, who is joining me, um, was very instrumental in getting that map done, which I'll show you a, a photo of it. Um, and so, you know, we were really promoting it in our emails and in our website in 2019. Uh, 2020 was when we did the map with all sorts of plans of having in-person bike rides highlighting these 12 different rides. And of course the pandemic happened. Um, so instead we, we had some challenges for people, encouraged people to check out the rides and do challenging you know, challenges by going on these different rides. And we're finding out um, RideSpot is adding a new feature that we hope to do something with this year. Um, so one of the things that um, Zoe is helping me with is creating some videos of the different ride spots or ride spot routes. And um, so we'll show you a little clip of, a clip of that. Um, and then uh, let's see, what was the other thing? Oh, we're gonna have a scavenger hunt, not necessarily associated with uh, with Ride Spot, but it will be a scavenger hunt in April. So we've got clues to encourage people to use their bike to find these different things. And we're planning on doing a mural route um, on Ride Spot once the Major Taylor mural is done, which is probably June or July of this year. So we're really excited about that and be able to feature um, Major Taylor's mural. So I'm going to look real quick at the um, the polling results. So everybody on this call cycles on bicycles on paved paths and trails and most on roads and some on natural surface mountain biking, some um, transportation. A lot of people are biking alone, 89% and 78% with family and friends and about half go on group rides and organized rides. Um, one person uh, bicycles for a competition. Um, some people have heard about ride spots, so that's great. Ride with GPS and other are the the top ones, and some have heard of Strava. And just was trying to find out how people found out about rides. So friends in the internet are the the number two or tied for first. Um, local bike club is and other are the next ones. So hopefully you'll be able to, no one has found out about places to ride using RideSpot. So hopefully um, that will change after tonight. So I'm gonna stop sharing those. And all right, so I need to share my screen with a couple of things. There's going to be a video I'm gonna show that is an overview of Ride Spot. And see if I can find it. Uh, let's see. There it is. Meet Sam. Sam used to watch her friend's adventures from the sidelines until she learned about the new app, RideSpot, developed by People for Bikes. Before discovering RideSpot, finding a place to ride was a total pain in the... But now it's easy. RideSpot gave Sam the confidence she needed to brush the cobwebs off her bike and start riding. RideSpot's turn-by-turn -turn audio directions mean that Sam can keep her eyes on the road and still know which way to go. The app gives Sam tools to ride on her own or join a group ride. She can even use RideSpot to find social events or workshops put on by her local bike shop. Sam enjoyed today's group ride so much that she wants to share her positive experience. With RideSpot, it's a breeze. Sam can publish a map of her route along with details and photos from the ride. Now other riders can follow Sam's map and enjoy the same route. 
mode ride spot now to discover and share great bike rides. So that gives an overview of ride spot. And I'm trying to find where, which one? It's probably this one. Um, so if if you go to Bicycle Garage Indy's page on Ride Spot, this is what you'll see. And there will be different rides. This is actually what I see as the BGI account, but it'll It'll have tabs of classic events and challenges. And the classics are the rides that we've put up. And the one thing that's different about RideSpot, um, first of all, as you saw in the video, it was it's really aimed at people who are wanting to find routes but really don't know um, they have gotten a bike. They ride in their neighborhood. They may have heard about the Monon because everybody knows about the Monon. Um, and they, but they're not quite ready to do a club ride like a Central Indiana Bicycling Association ride that because the, the shortest rides usually of SIBA rides are in the 25 or 20 to 25 miles. And somebody who is riding in their neighborhood you know, three or four miles or maybe five miles, isn't quite ready to jump to 25 miles. So what RideSpot does is actually, or what we've done with RideSpot is put in rides that are in the five to 20 mile range. So it's kind of a gap filler between somebody who's just riding in their neighborhood or riding in their neighborhood and wants to figure out some other place because they're bored going over around the same same neighborhood roads. Um, and so, and, and a way for them to find other places to ride. Now we, we also have put in different event rides that we're, we've been a sponsor of. So sometimes under events, you'll see like the night ride dinner ride or the night ride itself. Um, so people can follow that when they're doing the night ride. And we've put in challenges um, to encourage people to check out different rides. Um, but the core core part is finding finding rides that are near nearby, which I will show you how you can do that in a second. Um, so I'm going to go to this is one of the rides. This is the BNO Trail. Um, it's out and back, so it's a straight line, which is kind of a funny map. Um, but it the one thing about Ride Spot is it has stories that you can add. So you can have all sorts of stories and pictures. And so you get an idea of what you're gonna experience um, before you go on the ride. This particular ride actually also has a video of the trail. Unfortunately, there's not a way to make that a hot link, but you could copy and paste this into your browser and view the video, which is a really cool video. Um, I'm hoping to be able to ride that this year because I haven't been out on the new thing, especially to see the tunnel. Um, it's a cool bridge over it, but also to see the tunnel, it's got murals inside. It's really neat. Um, so that's one of the um, one of the rides that we have, and that's six miles, um, it's 12 miles total out and back. Um, the good thing or cool thing about the BNO is that it is getting extended. It was awarded some next level trail funding, both in the first round and the second round. So from you'll be able to go from downtown Indianapolis out into um, farther west in Hendricks County um, in the next several years once those grants are, are utilized. So that's exciting news about the BNO. But right now there is a six mile continuous um, portion and it's getting extended as we speak. Um, another ride is that we put together is the Cultural Trail and White River. And so that also has quite a few pictures that go along with it. And so if you've never been on this part of the White River Trail, it's really cool 
to the left of this photo is um, the Indianapolis Zoo. And to the right is the White River. And you get some really wonderful scenery of the White River and some unique things along the trail. This is along that same path um, by the zoo. And some more pictures of the White River itself. And this is the Washington Street Bridge. It's a pedestrian, now a pedestrian bicycle bridge that goes across the White River into downtown. And so those are just a sampling of some of the things that you would see along this six mile trail. And um, the thing that you can do once you see a route that you want to explore, you can, once you've logged in, um, and RideSpot is free to join. It takes your name and an email and a password. And you can add additional things, but that's all it takes in order to, to become a member. And once you're a member, you can download a GPX file. So if you have a Garmin computer on your bike and you want to have GPX or your Garmin computer give you turn-by-turn -turn instructions, you can do that. There's a TCX. Um, you can also download a, um, a PDF ride card, which I'll show you in just a second. Um, this is my favorite loop, um, Fort Harrison State Park. So right here at the start, um, there is a parking lot uh, ride, which is just south of Skiles Test Park. So this is Skiles Test Park right here. And Fall Creek Parkway uh, leads right to this parking lot. There's also a parking lot right there in the trail. You can go on the trail right across from that parking lot and get onto this. So this goes under the interstate. And so you don't have to have any road crossings right here you do have to cross the bridge and go onto the trail um, or cross the road to go continue on the trail. And then you are all on trail inside the park, all on trail around these two lakes, and then you come back. Um, if you want more riding, you can continue going west from this point and you can go all the way to Riverside Park. So, yes. Zoe? Connie? Yes. Uh, Jen, Jen had a question in the chat. Uh, she said, does this need to be accessed via computer on the app? I can't see any of what you're showing us and ridespot.org on my phone won't let me do anything. It's just a scrolling ad to get you to join. Am I missing something? Yes. Um, in order to see all of these things, you do have to be, you do have to join. So once you join with a name, email, and um, name, email, and password, then you can access all of this. Um, so this is after you've already, have already joined. Um, and you can download the she map. She did that. Okay. There is an app to join on your phone as well. I think she has the app. It just says on the app, I can't see any of what you're showing. Okay. Well, once I get get through this, we'll we'll go and oh. and I'll do that. I'll work on that. Um. Okay. So where was I? So you can go in, you know, tour around Fall Creek, or. Fort Harrison State Park using Fall Creek Trail. And this is some of the scenery that you would see. So there's a walnut grove that you ride through. And this is the trail through the forest. And these are some of my evening cruise folks going through the walnut grove. And the walnut grove is interesting because um, it, it's a walnut plantation and they they planted all of the trees in straight rows. So you'll see, you'll ride through all of these trees and they're in perfect straight rows, which you never see obviously in, in a 
in a normal forest. Um, okay, so let me go back to trying to see this. All right. Okay. Um, so where was I? What I was going to do next is to show the video that Zoe made of the right spot and I'll apologize up front because when I was playing it earlier, it's really grainy, but it isn't really grainy. So I'll share that with people later. It's much better in person, I promise you guys. <laughs> And that is just a clip of what Zoe is working on for the Fall Creek Trail. And I'm going to stop sharing. So what you can do, let me go back to, go back to this and I'm going to take myself out of log out so that I see it as a regular person okay so if you go to ridespot.org this is what you'll you'll get as as an intro and up on the right, right top is register. And that's where you would register and fill in your email and password and confirm your password. Um, and when you sign in, then you would be able to enter your email and password and then you would be able to access those things. Now, I'm going to sign in. EGI's account. <laughs> um, so up at the top, top left, this is what you would see. You can create a route classic route or an event or challenge. Um, you can discover routes and this is how I'm gonna walk through this. And then the other thing is you can learn about different things. So they have um, information about bikes, fixing a flat, doing hand signals, maintaining your chain, um, you know, a bunch of different um, short either videos or informational pages of general things. So the other thing, so discovering a route, what you're going to want to do is either put your zip code. So I'm going to put my zip code. And then enter. And then up here, there's some slide bars. So you can choose your total ride distance. Let's say I want to do anything from 
actually, let's go the other way. I want to go zero to 20 miles or so. And I want it to be within five miles or 10 miles of where, where I live. And then you can do a ride category. So you can do paved or unpaved or commute or, or whether there's e, um, e mountain bike approved. So I'm going to do paved and then I want to see what it comes up with. And it's scrolling. All right. So I, so I've come up with uh, Fort Harrison Park, Fishers, Cultural Trail, Bates Hendricks, you know, a bunch of different rides. So if I click on this, it will show it in the map. And if I click on a bunch of them, it'll show where they are. And so I can decide, okay, well, I live here and this ride is pretty close to that one or I'm really close to this. So I'm gonna see where some of these others are. That one's downtown. And this one's up in Fishers or up in actually North Oak Carmel. So we've got a bunch of different rides that are all, all over Indianapolis and surrounding, um, surrounding areas. This little um, medallion, that indicates it's a classic ride. And the difference between um, RideSpot and some of the other places that you might find rides on the internet is that the rides that have this medallion, those are done by either bike shops or um, bicycle advocacy organizations. And so you can find a bunch of rides um, via Ride Spot or, oops, that's not what I wanted to do, um, via Strava or Ride with GPS or some other, other places. Um, but there's, it could be, you know, any random person putting it in there. Whereas the ones that are, and you get that also with Ride Spot, but the ones that are classic, um, which is had, which has this medallion, that means that some, someone like, and you can tell who it is, Bicycle Garage Indy is the one who put this, this ride on, um, on Ride Spot. And some of the other features that you have with RideSpot is you can like the ride, you can share the ride with other people, you can download the ride card, which reminds me, I want to go ahead and show you what the ride card is. So let's go to, uh, let's see. This will do the park loop that we had before. I can save it. Either a GPX file or download a TCX file or download the PDF card. And so if I do the PDF card, it'll pop up in Adobe Acrobat and then you can save it. It also has a QR code. On the, on the ride card and the QR code itself uh, or the QR code will upload the route to your app on your phone. And I'm trying to find one. So here's the ride 
card itself. So it'll have an overview of the map. It'll have the QR code. It'll actually show you, you know, elevation change. It'll have the ride itself here so that you could also access it that way. And then it'll have a cue sheet of right, right turn, left turn, different, different instructions. And so you can have that, you can print it off and carry it with you. Um, and you can also access the app, which will give you turn by turn instructions um, by using the QR code. And I had the cultural trail also um, has a little bit more in QSheet because there's a lot more turns. Uh, but that also shows all the different places that you would you would head on there. All right, so that's kind of the overview. I think I wanted to show one more thing. I'm going to stop sharing for right now. All right, so I'm going to stop for right now and check out stuff in chat. Right. Yeah, so um, we have some Southside rides, not very many. Um, I would love to have more of them. So um, if you have suggestions, yeah, I will, um, I'm gonna go ahead and open this up for um, you can either chat or you can turn off your mic and ask questions um, as far as where where you would like. There, there are some, there's a ride south of, um, on Worthsville Road. So it's south of our south store, about a mile south of Greenwood that goes out into the country. We have a route that goes there. Um, and there's a couple in Greenwood that I put in last year. Um, so, a co you know, there's some rides on the south side, but yes, that's, that's an area that we would love to um, try and explore and do some more. So, Jen, were you saying something? I saw your lips move, but I didn't hear, didn't hear anything. My husband and I have both downloaded this app and tried to set this up tonight. And I'm doing, I'm trying to search. I'm trying to, I, we live in Noblesville. We live right on Morse, like we can see it. And I can't find the route that is the Morse Reservoir Loop. And I'm like, this is ridiculous. I have searched as Noblesville. I have searched as our zip code. It's, I've tried to take all the filters back off. Show me everything that's here. And it's not, and he and I are getting completely different results and I'm kind of confused. And I'm getting things like 106th and Spring Mill to Market District. I'm like, I gave you permission to use my location. How do you think I am at 106th when I'm at, like closer to 200? Yeah. So I'm a little confused right now about how this. Also, the way when you what you show us on the desktop site is very very differently. The controls are very differently set up than they are on the app. So as you're showing me that there, and then I'm trying to figure out where on earth that is in here. So right. I don't have a computer up. I'm using my iPad for our meeting and I'm like, yeah. So I'm just struggling with figuring this out. But any help on navigating the app? I was trying to, it was showing me things that were 100 miles long. So I changed the filters for that. Then it wouldn't show me anything. Um, <laughs> I know a lot about the desktop version because that's what I've used a lot. I haven't used that much on the, on the app itself. So I will, I'll have to get back to you on that one to see if I can um, pull it up on my phone and do it. And the problem yes. that I have on my phone is since I'm a beta tester is I'm not seeing <laughs> other people see if I do it on my phone, unless I, I have two accounts. So now, I if, to make sure I'm not in the beta account. So if I go to my desktop, if I were to go get my computer and log in on the site mm -hmm. and 
and say, hey, I wanna click on all these routes, will they then port over to the phone app when I log yeah, back in on the phone can, app? Yes, you can save them. You can okay. save them to your account and, and save it as a favorite. Okay. Um, and then um, like when you start your ride, when you wanna start your ride, it, it will ask, um, you can start a ride or you can say saved rides. And so mm -hmm. you can save it and you can choose the saved ride. Okay. Um, so there should be I a see that. Saved yep. ride. Okay. So I, I do, I do see that discover stuff and then ride from saved route. So, okay. It's just the filters are kind of weird on this. Yeah, I, I will, should... I will <laughs> check that out after we're done. Yeah. Cause, cause I know I've done a lot of work with the desktop and I have not done a lot of work with other than um, other than testing out routes and um, on my phone, but as I said, I'm a beta tester, so I don't necessarily see the what everybody sees on that. So, um, yeah. So for East Side routes, yes, I actually have gotten. Um, some of the east side routes that we have, I've gotten from Trent Taylor. Um, so the touch on uploading the rise to your phone. Yeah, so there's a couple of, let me see if I can go back to screen sharing for a second. All right, so there's a couple ways to share share this. You can download, and I probably should go and get my phone and see if I can do this. So you can download a GPX, that'll go to like a Garmin computer or download a TCX or download the PDF ride card. Um, and, All right, so Jen, what is your zip code? Or I can just put Noblesville, right? It's 46062. All right, and we'll go with. So we have, so when I did the sliders to ride a 40, 45 miles or less and search radius of four, I got the Morse Lake. And then that, that comes up. So you can build with selected. All right. Um, one of the things I was going to show, and I will get back to all of you as to how you load that to your phone, because I know there's a way to do it. I'm just, I'm on BGI's account right now and not my own. And I think it's, it shows it a little bit differently. Um, but I wanted to show you something else as far as commuting. All of the different bike trains. So if you live in a different area, of town and you want to ride down to downtown Indianapolis. These are the different bike trains that during a normal year we would have going to um, going from these various locations to downtown 
Indianapolis. Um, we would have monthly bike and breakfast, not last year and unfortunately not this year, but previous years for many years, we had bike and breakfast on the third Friday of the month, kind of like a bike to work day, only we did it every month. Um, and so these are the different routes that people would take from the various sides of town. The Northeast side that actually starts way over here by, by Fort Harrison State Park, that bike train actually is still going, was still going last year and is still going this year. Um, the other ones I'm not sure about, but that one is they ride two to three times a week to downtown. Um, but there's, we had one from uh, Fountain Square, one from down in the south side of town, one from way out in Plainfield, believe it or not, way up by uh, Eagle Creek, uh, using and then north using the Monon, uh, Freewheeling at 33rd and Central, and then Fort Harrison State Park, and well, near Fort Harrison State Park and around 56th Street. And so there are a variety of ways to get to get downtown from various things. So these are still up there in case people want to ride to downtown for different downtown events, um, as well as um, when we hopefully be able to do the bike and breakfast next year, um, we'd be able to, to utilize these. Um, that, that is how you find it there. Um, and I'll have to get my phone out and test out a couple of things and then um, I'll email all of you instructions on how you get these things loaded to your phone. Um, and one, I did want to touch on, uh-huh. Yes. Uh, there's just a question in the chat. So okay. Scott wanted to know, he said it's off topic, but your bike train generated a thought, will there be a bike to work day this year? Um, yes, no there's, there, um, Bike Indianapolis and Commuter Connect are, Commuter Connect has a, uh, what's it called, bike or car free day Indy in September. And so we usually align the September bike and breakfast with that. And so the plan is to have the bike, bike to work day align with the car free day Indy um, in September. Uh, I don't know anything beyond that, <laughs> but that's that's what we've got so far. Um, we don't have any events currently. Um, we had some events before, and I did have some challenges in the past. Um, but those aren't coming up. Oh, I know why. All right, so the events all expired. So you'll have to check those out once we get those back up as far as the different challenges that we'll have. Uh, so I'm going to stop sharing my screen again. I did want to, let's see, where was it? All right. I think Mark would like to know how to upload a route. Well, there's a couple different ways. Um, you should be able to, like, if you have this um, ride card, you should be able to scan the QR code and that will upload the route. Um, you can also, once you're in the program, um, you can save it as a GPX or a TCX or the ride, the ride card. So I will get back to you as how you directly get that to your phone. You should be able to pull it up on your phone. Um, and search 
you know, do the discover thing, same thing on your phone um, and pull up the ride and be able to, to start right from there. Um, interesting thing, like I live about three miles from the start of this ride. And so I would start my ride spot at home and then I'm riding. And as soon as I get on the ride, it actually starts giving me instructions. Um, even though I didn't start my ride right at the start. If I've, if I've chosen that ride and say, okay, I'm gonna ride this ride or that's gonna be part of my ride, it'll start giving me instructions as soon as I get onto the ride. Um, so that also works if like you're on the B&O and that was that out and back. Uh, let's see, there it is. And let's say you lived over here. If you start on this side, it'll give you instructions um, starting from where you are on the ride until, until you leave it, um, which is, is interesting. So you don't necessarily have to start exactly at the beginning. Um, the other thing you can do, um, I'm going to just unclick a bunch of these. So if, if you wanted to create a route based on one of these routes, you could say, okay, I want to do this, do this Monon Midland but I want to kind of create create my own thing. You can click on it and then you can do this build from selected. And when you do that, it'll bring up the map. It'll bring up the route. But now you can create it by just clicking. Let's say I want to start here instead. And I'm going to go here. And forget this part and go there. And just do this part of it. And then now you have Q sheet and you can save the route. And I'm not going to save it here because I'll save it on BGI's account. But you can save the route, and then you would still get the Q by Q instructions, and you would have the the ride card specifically for that particular route if you wanted to shorten it in some way or alter it in some way. So I'm going to cancel that for right now. And you can adjust in the Q sheet. You can adjust all of these different things. Um, if you wanted to say, or, or you can add a cue sheet, say, you know, somebody's house is here that you want to stop at, or there's a Dairy Queen here, or, or you know, someplace that you want to stop at in, at a park, you can add the cue sheet and add it to the cue sheet. Um, any kind of comments that you want to make. We'll also show you like bike paths. So let's say, oh, there's this bike path here. I want to explore it and go up here. So you could use that, use it instead. Um, and it'll click to all the different bike paths. So instead of going this way, I could have come back through this bike path here. And so I'm going to go back. All right, so I'll stop sharing for right now. All right, so are there any um, routes that you would like me to try and find for you um, to, to interact. So I could, um, we could put in a zip code and see what routes currently are, currently we've got already, if you want to try and do that.
Someone said try 46032. Okay, I will do that. So we'll go back to here. All right, so we're going to discover Right now I have it set so it is what we um, currently have. Let's see, let me do a search radius of a little smaller than that. Okay, so this is within 12 miles of 46032. So we've got Fort Harrison. This is what BGI's content is, not everybody's North Indy. We did we did a donut ride. And then they went over. We have an Eagle Creek ride, which is actually a little farther west. So right now in 46032 we've basically got we have the Fishers, the Noblesville and north of Carmel are our routes. Now, if I take that out, and I did have one in that area. After all of these other routes, you'll see some, there's some SRAM ones and a gray goat from Fountain Square and some great places 2020. Uh, so there's quite a few other different rides. Yes, Zoe? Um, does this ride spot have a, a heat map function? It you know does what? not. Okay. Not so that I know Scott, of. That would be uh, Strava Scott, that does. Would probably be your best option. Would be to look at a heat map to build that route to see uh, who travels, see what the most traveled roads are. So, and then when we're done looking in this zip code. Someone would, Ron would like a good downtown to Speedway route if there is one. Downtown to Speedway, probably, let's see. Let's go with Speedway. Not what I wanted. All right. Yeah, I was thinking that um, that bike Indianapolis might have one for the ride to 500. And I'm not. I'm not seeing their route. Well, they do have a couple. So these are the two bike to 500 routes that Bike Indianapolis has come up with. Um, now granted, these are done with a group during the Bike to 500 and they, they have some, some assistance with police at least to the 500, not necessarily on the way back. Um, but those, those are the routes that they, they gave people. Now, 
in three or four years, there will be a connection from 10th Street using the b and all the way to actually right around here to using this b and all the way there once that's done, which will be really cool. Um, but that's not done yet. But that is the next level trail grant is that's happening um, in the next two or three years because that's what got funded first. So that'll be probably your best bet in two or three years. Yes, Zoe? Um, Jen would like to know if you can search by trail name. She'd like to know how far the Midland Trace Trail extends. I don't think this searches by name because um, it's, its location is either zip code or speedway, but I can I can try. Well, how do you, what do you know? It actually has the middle and trace there. So if you put in middle and trace, you'll get something in Westfield and it connects to the Monon Trail going north. I'm not sure how far east it goes beyond that. think. Yeah, that's all the Monon Trail. I know they're working on connecting it east of there, but I don't know how far. So that is possible. I've never tried that because I've always just been building the routes. All right, so I'm gonna stop sharing my screen for right now. Are there any additional questions? I know it's a, it's a lot of, um, oh, I was going to try and show the picture, but I don't know where that is. Thought I had my picture up. Uh, we have a picture of the wall that has the the map that Zoe worked on, and I'm not sure how easy I can find it. Um, I was going to get that up and it's not available. Let's see. I know that I had, let's see. I'm not gonna be able to find it quickly, so I will. I'll send a, a link to that. Um, yeah, so on the, yeah, the Strava heat map, you can see where that, you know, it kind of outlines where a lot of people go um, or a lot of people ride who use Strava. Um, the, and what we're, what we're trying to do with RideSpot is actually give people routes um, that they can explore, hopefully near where they live or even elsewhere. And like I said earlier, this is a national program. So you could actually find a route, you know, like say you're going on vacation somewhere and you could type in the, the zip code or the, the name of the, um, of the town that you're going to and see what options there are there. Now, RideSpot, like I said, it just launched a couple of years ago. 
So there's, you know, there are quite a few routes for the 700 bike shops that have joined on, um, but it's not going to be nearly as widespread yet, um, but they will be curated routes for the routes that currently exist. Let's see. Try and try and share this again. All right. So what other areas of town, we said south side and west side. Um, trying to find it. There it is. Um, so the one thing I wanted to try and show you is the uh, southern part of Indianapolis, which I'll go with Greenwood. I'm always amazed when you do a search for the search radius, how far it actually goes away from where you want. But Worthville Country Road is one of them that is out in the country. So on the south side, this is starts at a elementary school. And there's also a farmer's market on the other side of the interstate. Um, there's a multi-use trail that goes right through this interchange, right through the middle of it. And then it's on the north side and south side once you cross the interstate. And then these are all low traffic country roads out, um, out east of I-65. And there were a couple of others that I did in Franklin County. So this one's down in Franklin County and uses some of the trails and roads down in there, which is outside of Greenfield or Green Greenwood. And there was another one that I did north of Greenwood. And I'm not seeing it right now. is a little weird. Um, and then we did a, oh, there is an Indy to Irvington tour. So if you wanted to go from downtown Indy out east to Irvington and back, that's a nice, nice route. And a couple down in Franklin. And let me figure out where else. Um, this is a ride in Bates Hendricks district, which is just south of downtown, but it goes goes into Fountain Square and it goes into Garfield Park and uses part of Pleasant Run Parkway. Pleasant Run Parkway is one of the routes that, one of the trails that we're gonna be highlighting this spring um, and summer because they just redid parts of it and extended, made some crossings really nice. Um, so we're, we're gonna be highlighting that it goes like this area right here. 
on the south side of town. Um, if you haven't ever ridden uh, around Garfield Park, it's it's really beautiful, especially when the spring flowers are out. It's really nice. Um, these are all low traffic roads and in Fountain Square, there's some bike lanes and multi-use trail or um, two-way bike lanes on some of the roads and then Pleasant Run Parkway um, and Pleasant Run Trail runs this part right here. And it's it's just, that's a really neat, a neat area and neat ride. All right. So Franklin, there's a couple down here in Franklin on the far south side don't have anything in this part right now, which is what I would love to have is somewhere in this area. Um, so if anybody knows of people that can check out some routes down there, that would be great. And let's see. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing and okay. Any other questions that people might have? I will look into the app on the phone to make sure I I can I'll probably have to have a third account <laughs> to check that out. Um, just to to see since I have the beta account. Um, just to see how I, how that works. Um, and Zoe, was there anything else I was going to cover? Remember? No? Okay. I think that was it. All right. Well, um, all of you, I'm sure, have my email. And so if you have any additional questions regarding RideSpot, um, I'm the local expert at BGI because <laughs> I've been doing most of the RideSpot stuff, um, but I'll, I'll work on looking at my, my app on the phone to make sure that I know how that works really well. And I've been mainly concentrating on getting the routes up um, so that we have routes in a variety of places um, around, you know, in central Indiana and around uh, Marion County and surrounding counties. Um, so we'll be working on getting a, uh, getting some challenges and a mural ride and some other fun things this summer. And hopefully people can get to know how to use RiseSpot by using these things as well. So um, next week, we've got um, Central Indiana Bicycling Association will be joining us on, Ride, on Spotlight. And they're the local bike club. So they'll be talking about um, the things, the rides that they have, as well as um, their uh, all of their different activities. If you've heard of the Night Rider, the Hilly Hundred, that's that is the club that puts them on. Um, and then the other, uh, I think it's the end of April that I have scheduled so far. Um, Health by Design will be um, joining us and talking about their bicycling initiatives that they have. Um, I still have a couple of more weeks to fill in the blanks. Um, but there, there are a plethora of things to talk about in bicycling. So I will, I'm sure we'll have other, other organizations or other initiatives to talk about. Um, so there is a question, is the night ride scheduled and going to happen? The night ride from what I've heard um, and probably can talk about that next week with, with Siba. Um, from what I've heard is it's going to be a virtual event this year and 
not an in-person event. Um, part of that has to do with, of course, the pandemic still going on, um, but it also, um, where the night ride had been staging for the last several years is totally under construction. Um, if you've been downtown across from the city market uh, or right outside of the city market, they've got the road all torn up um, there. And that's going to be that way through the rest of this year. So, you know, trying to find, you know, trying to do a different location um, is not going to work out this year, I don't think. Um, so I don't know what the final verdict is, but that's what I had heard. Um, and Night Ride is something that um, Bicycle Garage Indy has been involved with actually since, I think, since the beginning of, of the Night Ride. So I personally have been involved with the Night Ride since the beginning um, in a variety of, of um, roles, including being the director of it in 1999. So um, it's, I, I know the night ride well, and my husband is the night ride webmaster. So if you go to the night ride website, my husband's the one who does that. Um, so any other questions? I think one, one of these weeks, I might just have a free for all, ask me anything, uh, spotlight on bicycling. Um, because I probably, if I don't know the answer, I know who knows the answer. Having been around bicycling for 30 years or so in this area, um, I know a lot of what's going on, not everything, but pretty much, um, what's going on. So if you have additional questions, you know, feel free to contact me via email or, um, and... <laughs> um, yeah, so yeah, I've been involved in the night, the night ride. Thanks, Scott. Um, I was on the organize the very first organizing committee in 94 when it started and was on that for five years and then was the night ride director for 1999 and then um, in my role at BGI, now I coordinate all of our efforts with, with the event. So I know it from all different sides, which is, it's kind of unique. Um, so I think that's, that's all I've got for right now. And um, thank you very much. And we'll, you know, like I said, email, email me any questions and I'll, um, if I don't know the answer, I, I know who at Ride Spot can can help. So we'll get everything all sorted out for those of you who are trying to use it. So thank you very much and we'll see you next week. Thanks. <laughs>